Good evening, ladies. I am just waiting for everybody to connect to audio. Hope you are all well. Um, thank you for joining me live this evening. Do appreciate it. If you, before, while I stop just waiting for a few more people to arrive, I would love to know in the chat box what other things that are you are struggling most with at the moment. You don't need to be on video if you don't want to. It's entirely up to you. Um, you can switch your videos off if you want to. Um, but I would love to know in the chat box if there is anything you are currently uh, struggling with in terms of you're on this webinar because we're talking about reclaiming radiance and getting back to the essence of who you are. And if you if there's anything you're struggling with, I can make sure that I kind of cover that. So maybe it's sleep, maybe it's um, sugar cravings, whatever it is that you're struggling with at the minute. Uh, just put it in the chat box and I'll make sure that I cover it whilst we're waiting for a few more people to arrive. Um, so I hope everybody has managed to get on OK. I think everybody's here. Lisa, are you? Can you hear me, Lisa? I don't know whether you can. can. Yeah. OK, yeah. perfect. Do you just want to mute yourself while I go into the... Um... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. So uh, Lillian's struggling with chocolate cravings. Zeta's struggling with uh, stress eating, mainly um, sweets, foods and carbs. That's not uncommon, Zeta, and we will cover some of that this evening as well. Gemma says very poor sleep. OK, I'm going to cover that as well this evening too. So you're in the right place. Um, so I'm super excited to share this uh, webinar with you this evening. It's a relatively new webinar for me. I don't normally kind of go down... I normally just talk mainly about sugar, but um, I'm going to make sure that I cover lots of things this evening. So um, if you do have any questions as we go on, just put them in the chat box and I'll come back and answer them once I've finished. Because when I share my screen, I can't see any of the questions. So put them in the chat box. And if you think, oh, she hasn't answered my question, it's not because... I'm ignoring you. It's because I can't see the question. So I will come back and answer them at the end. OK, so I'm just going to share my screen and we will get going. So uh, welcome to this evening's webinar. I'm super grateful to have you here with me live. It's always great to talk to people when they're live. I know lots of people struggle with the timings and stuff. So I am recording it as well, which I will be sending it out to everybody that's registered. So you'll get another recording of this. So if there's anything that you missed this evening, um, don't panic. I will I will uh, be sending it out tomorrow morning once it's processed. So I just want to, before we start, just tell you a little bit more about me, okay? Um, because... Some of you don't know who I am. You're trusting coming on this webinar this evening and you're just kind of going, OK, well, I don't know what I'm letting myself in for, basically. So I am Sue Thomas. I call myself the sugar free coach because I empower women to reduce their um, addiction to sugar, basically, or reduce their reliance on sugar so that they can live a full and vibrant life. I am a nutritional therapist. I've been a nutritional therapist since 2013. But I used to, but I've been in the wellness industry for nearly 23 years. I used to be a personal trainer, but I was doing so much nutrition with my clients that I kind of just went, you know what, I'm going to move over. I'm going to retrain as nutritional therapist and qualify. And that's, that is my focus. And I absolutely love what I do. I love empowering women to have light bulb moments where they go, oh my goodness, I get it now. I really understand what's going on because I'm going to bust some myths for you this evening as well in terms of um, what the media and what the food industry have been telling us for years and I, hopefully you're going to go away from this webinar this evening with some uh, with some real insights into things that you can do to help you to get better sleep to help you manage your weight better uh, to help you manage those sugar cravings to just help you get your your vibrancy back basically reclaim your radiance I am going to make you a special offer at the end, and it, I'm only going to talk about this special offer on the webinar tonight. So if you get to the end of the webinar, I'm going to give you a code at the end of the webinar that you can use. Um, but I I'm not sharing it other than outside of this webinar. So for those of people watching on catch up, stay on till the end. For those of you who think maybe I want to work with Sue, there's a there's a, a special offer at the end with a special code, and I'm only sharing it on the webinar tonight. So. Um, I like to think of myself as someone who doesn't take herself too seriously. I get it. I know that life can be really difficult. I know that life is busy. I know that sometimes sugar creeps in again. I, I hold my hand up and say I'm not 100% sugar free. 
Um, I like to have a little bit of sugar here and there, but I know what to do to help keep my blood sugars balanced so that I can get rid of those cravings. A lot of the time we think that sugar cravings are because we haven't got any willpower, but it's so much more to do with what's going on internally, the hormones that are interacting in your body um, and the way that particularly our blood sugar hormone insulin is interacting in the body. So I'm going to help you understand and help you feel better about the fact that it's not that you haven't got any willpower when you've got those sugar cravings, when you're not sleeping that well. It's more to do with what's going on internally. Um, and like I said, I like to feel that I'm not, I don't take myself too seriously. And when I'm working with clients, I try and meet them where they are at the stage that they feel that they can cope with the changes that I'm suggesting that they make. So that's who I am. Okay, tonight we are going to go through reclaiming radiance, how to rediscover your inner glow and your sense of well-being. So you're on here tonight because you're kind of like, this just isn't working for me at the minute where I am. There's something that's not quite, you know, sitting comfortably for you. Maybe it's because you're not getting enough sleep. Maybe you've got a load of brain fog. Maybe you're struggling with menopause symptoms. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, it doesn't have to be like that. Okay, but all of these things the hot flushes, the night sweats, the weight gain, the low mood, lack of energy, brain fog, joint pain, digestive issues, poor sleep, anxiety, all of them take away from our sense of who we are. And actually, as we move through the different stages in our life, we should be we should be um, growing and developing. And we've got, we've got the best time of our life when we get into our 40s and 50s because we've got less responsibilities. Sometimes we have maybe some more because our maybe our parents age and that kind of thing as well. But actually, we've gotten we've got an understanding and we've got a kind of ex experience of what life was like when we were in our 20s and 30s. So we should be able to live a full and vibrant life as we go through these different stages in our in our uh, in our life cycle. And yet we find ourselves being dogged by all these different symptoms, which seem to be getting worse in 21st century life. We seem to have more and more menopause symptoms than ever before. We seem to have more and more weight gain than ever before, more and more sugar cravings, this kind of thing. And it's compromising who we are as a person. And I'm here tonight to share with you that I, that it doesn't have to be like that, that you can take back control, that you can find the sense of the, the, your, your inner glow again. You can get back to that, the essence of who you are as a person. 21st century life, has put a lot of stress on us as women we're expected to step up and do all these different things and you know still in some cases have families or you know kind of hold down a job and all these different things as well so much more than ever before but alongside that we've got things like chemical estrogens that we're being exposed to through the water that we drink through the air that we breathe through the the fertilizers on the vegetables that we're consuming all of these things are putting an impact on our hormones. They're causing our hormones to go out of balance. And that is having an impact on our bodies. It's leading us to have cravings, the stress that we're under, eating on the go. We're having cravings for sugar. We're maybe not quite as active as we used to be 50, 60 years ago. We're maybe leaning on alcohol a little bit too much because it helps us feel like we can... Um, uh, kind of relax at the end of the day and we sometimes are leaning on caffeine to get us through the day as well and all of these things are putting a compromise on our body internally okay so there's 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 five things that you need to have in place to kind of find that inner glow again you need to have the right mindset that positive mindset you need to be moving we need to make sure our nutrition is where it needs to be it doesn't need to be kind of perfect just needs to work for where your body is at this moment in time. We need to make sure we're hydrated and we need to make sure we're getting decent sleep. I'm only going to cover two of these areas tonight. I'm going to cover nutrition and I'm going to cover sleep. But before I do either of those two, I want to um, start with the first step, basically. So the first step, oh, yeah, I forgot the slide was in there, actually. So... I am going to share with you a slap step in a minute, but what is going on inside is having an impact on our ability to cope with things externally. So if our body's stressed internally, 
we are going to have a difficulty coping with stress externally. Most women, when they get into their 40s and 50s in 21st century life, are struggling with some kind of sluggish liver. Don't panic. It's not the end of the world. It can be solved. And I'm going to talk about it as we go through it. They've often got some slow motility through their intestines. So the waste is moving through their intestine relatively slowly. We've got toxicity that we're exposed to in the form of chemical estrogen, so xenoestrogens that I've mentioned already. And sometimes we can be reabsorbing those into the system and they're scrambling the hormonal message that the body's receiving around estrogen and progesterone. Often we see a bit of weight gain as we go through our 40s and 50s, things that used to work when we we're in our 20s and, th and 30s are no longer working. We're putting on maybe weight around the middle. We've got a little bit of inflammation going on. Maybe joint health is not as good as it used to be. You're making that groaning sound when you sit down or where you stand up. And we think what we've got to do is count calories and restrict and get that weight under control. And actually that sends us into a place of just a, a low mood, a feeling of this is really hard and I can't do that or I can't do this. And it feels like it's a trial and it shouldn't feel like it's a trial. This stage in our life should be something to be celebrated and should be joyous. And we can get all that back under control when we understand the key things that we need to do. The steps that I'm going to take you through in a minute. I thought we're on this slide and on, um, but I'm going to take you through this in a minute. What we've done is we've stopped listening to the messages that our body is sending us. Our body is a really sophisticated machine. It will tell you if it's not happy. So if you're struggling with IBS, that is a symptom that's something going on with your intestinal system, your digestive system. If you're struggling with joint pain, that is a sign that you're, you're that there's inflammation in, the, in your body and that we can get it under control by making sure we're, we're making the right ch food choices. Uh, if you're struggling with low mood, that's often a sign that your, your liver is a little bit sluggish. Your liver is a really emotional organ. And it will come out as emotions, um, it particularly in kind of low mood. Uh, bloating as well is another sign that your liver is a little bit sluggish. If your sleep is poor, that's another sign that your liver is not working efficiently because when it's detoxifying through the night, it's going to, um, if it's not working effect effectively, it's going to bring you into a lighter phase of sleep and you'll wake up and it'll be really hard to get back to sleep. All of these are messages that your body is sending you, telling you, that you need to make some changes. And yet we carry on with day-to-day -day life thinking, oh, it's just the stage that I'm at. It'll be fine. I'll come out the other side. It's just the stage that I'm at. We maybe put a sticking plaster on it with using some painkillers or, you know, going uh, going down a, 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 um, a, a, a pill, the route of a pill. You know, we might go to the doctor and they prescribe us antidepressants or what have you. But it doesn't solve the underlying problem. The underlying problem is still there. And all of it is manageable and solvable. All of it, when you understand how, if you get your body working efficiently, you can live a full and vibrant life. It doesn't have to be, oh, it's just the stage that I'm at. Or I guess this is what it's like now. It doesn't have to be like that. You can live to, to, to your fullest capacity through your 50s and 60s enjoying life not feeling like there's joint pain or discomfort or low mood and that kind of thing so we are going to take that first step now <laughs> we are going to move into the first step so I'm going to share with you three steps this evening that you can take away right now and start to um, implement them in your day-to-day -day life the first step is to understand that our liver and our intestine needs to be healthy OK, and there's some really simple things you can do to support your intestine, and your liver. These two organs, in my opinion, are, aside from the heart, are the most important organs when it comes to being in our 50s and 60s. We need our intestine and our liver working effectively. So let's just under, underline this and get clear on on why we need the liver and the intestine working effectively. So the liver is about the size of your hand when it's open. And it sits just under your rib cage on the right hand side. It has a role to play in about 500 different functions across the body. OK, so it's really, really important organ. It's it 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 will um, convert excess glucose into fat, into triglycerides, but equally as much it will convert triglycerides back into glucose for energy production when it's working efficiently. 
it helps to create the raw materials for your um, estrogen and progesterone to help you manage your hormone balance on a month to month basis and move through the different stages of your life unaffected by hormone changes. Um, it will convert vitamin D into an active form of vitamin D. It will convert, th convert thyroxine into the active form of thyroxine so that you've got a good metabolism. It's got a massive role to play in the body. I could keep on talking about what the liver does. Yeah, it's an organ that we tend to ignore. We don't think about it, okay? So the liver will also clear toxins out of the system. It will clear excess alcohol out of the system and it will clear any toxins that you've been exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis out of, your, out of the system because these toxins are a threat to the body. So it's going to work really hard to clear these things out of your system because they're not, they're not natural to the body. The body doesn't recognize them. The liver is a natural detox organ. And 50 years ago, it was able to do the job it needed to do. But in 21st century life, we're exposed to so many more chemicals than ever before. It's estimated that before a woman leaves the house in the morning, she's exposed to about 500 different chemicals or different uh, toxins that we absorb. And the liver has to work over time to clear these um, toxins out of the system. So it starts to downgrade other actions. If it's overloaded, if it's what's called sluggish, it will downgrade other actions like converting triglycerides, fat stores into glucose for energy production. So it makes managing our weight more, uh, more, uh, more difficult. Um, it will downgrade the creation of the raw materials for estrogen and progesterone to help our hormones balance naturally. And it will have to work overtime through the night to clear toxins out of the system. And as I said already, which brings us into a lighter phase of sleep and will disrupt our sleep. If you're waking between one and three at night, from a circadian rhythm perspective, that's when the liver is working its hardest. So if you're waking between one and three in the night, that is a sign that your liver is sluggish. If you've got puffy bags under your eyes or black rings under your eyes, that's a sign that your liver's sluggish. If you're feeling low, if your mood is low and you can't seem to get yourself out of it, if you've had you know, too much alcohol the night before, you might find the next day your mood is low or you're slightly anxious. That's all the sign that your liver is struggling. The liver, in my opinion, is one of the first places to start when we want to get our inner glow back, when we want to find, refine the, that person, that, the essence of who we are, because the liver has such a huge impact across the body. Yeah, we never we never look at it. We never we never pay any attention. We need to love our liver. We need to give our liver as much love as possible, as much TLC as possible, because it is the first place to start when we're wanting to get back to the person that we used to be. When we want to refine that person and the, and the, and refine that inner glow. And then we need the intestine working properly. We need to be moving waste through our intestine at least twice a day. Many of us are finding that we we might move it once a day, but sometimes it's every other day. It's very dependent, actually, how much when waste moves through your intestine, how much water you're drinking. So if you're not drinking that much water on a day to day basis and the motility of your waste through your intestine is slow, you can probably solve that problem by increasing the amount of water that you drink on a day to day basis. But the thing with slow motility is when the liver clears those toxins out of our system at night time. If your waste is moving through your intestine really slowly, unfortunately, what happens is sometimes we can reabsorb those toxins back into the system because they're moving too slowly through the intestine. And so then the liver has to work overtime again to clear what it's already cleared. So we need our intestine working really, really efficiently. We also have lots of bacteria that live in our intestine called the microbiome. And this bacteria only your mother loves you more than your gut bacteria. Your gut bacteria only wants what's best for you, basically, and it will do everything it can to protect you. If your gut bacteria is not working effectively, that can have an impact on your immunity because 90% of your immune system is in your intestine and it will have an, it communicates with your, with the, with the immune system in your bloodstream to protect you. It will stop you from absorbing viruses. It will stop alien um, molecules passing across the gut wall. The gut microbiome is really, really important. And even more importantly, when you've got the right balance of gut bacteria in your intestine, 
it will stop a lot of the toxins that are passing across the gut wall. It'll stop them from passing across. So it's a really important, they're now starting to call the gut microbiome a, 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 um, a, 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 the sixth organ, basically. That's how important it is. So we want our intestine and our gut microbiome, those bacteria that live in our intestine to be healthy and working efficiently. There is a direct link between your intestine and your brain called the vagus nerve. Anything that goes on in your intestine comes out in your brain. So if your intestine is slow and sluggish and toxic, you'll feel like you'll have no energy, you'll be feeling miserable all the time, and it'll be hard to get back to your inner glow. It'll be hard to get back to the person that you know that you can be. So by getting our intestine and our liver healthy, we can make a real difference right at the very beginning. And it's not difficult to do that. So I know you're going to say to me, well, how do I do that? How do I do that? Well, there's some really simple things that you can do. So in Chinese medicine, your liver is a green organ. It loves green food. Anything green will support your liver. OK, but funnily enough, green foods in the forms of things, in the form of things like broccoli and, you know, kind of all the greens that you can put on your plate, spinach and, you know, celery, you can see here and all of these greens basically contain lots of fiber and the fiber will feed the good bacteria in your intestine. It's known as a prebiotic, but also that fiber will attach to the toxins that your liver gets rid of and clear them out of your system. Now, none of us eat enough fiber on a day to day basis. Many of us don't eat enough green food. Many of us don't eat enough fiber. So the combination of not eating enough green food and having enough fiber means we're not feeding the good bacteria. We're not supporting the liver and we're not clearing those toxins out of the system. We've always been exposed to toxins. The liver has always been the organ that's cleared it. And up until about 50 years ago, it used to be able to do that really effectively. But now we need to give the liver and the intestine a little bit more support on a day to day basis. Excuse me. We need to be thinking about reducing down our alcohol and caffeine consumption, mainly because both of these two things will put a huge pressure on the liver. Alcohol, as already said, has to be metabolized and cleared out of the system. Caffeine will con con compromise the liver's ability to convert th the inactive form of thyroxine into the active form of thyroxine, which is the thyroid gland, the, the, the hormone that gives us a better metabolism, that gives us energy. So caffeine and alcohol really compromise the liver. Now, I'm not saying don't ever have it again. That's not what I'm saying. It's just about understanding where is it that I'm choosing to have at the alcohol and the caffeine and Actually, in the, thing, in the case of caffeine, for example, if you're leaning on caffeine to get you through the day, often what it's doing is compromising your ability to get through the day because it's a stimulant that you're leaning on. But actually, if we cleared it out of the system and we had a healthier liver, you wouldn't need the stimulant to, to lean on because you'd have more energy on a day to day basis. And when you drink more water, often what we do is we reach for caffeine because we our energy is low. But actually, if we lift our water consumption up, that will contribute to our energy production. When we're hydrated, we've got a lot more energy, so we don't need anywhere near as much caffeine. So if you're someone who's drinking maybe five, six cups of coffee a day because you think that's what I need to get that get me through the day using that caffeine, what I would say to you is start by reducing just one of the cups down to hot water. Because often what it is, is we're, you know, it's what we want to hold a cup in our hands. It's a kind of habit thing. Um, so just take one of the coffees out and replace it with hot water. Same goes for tea um, and replace it with hot water and then gradually reduce it down over the period of a couple of weeks so that you're just getting to the point where you're only needing one cup of coffee a day. The hot water will energize you because it's getting you more hydrated and, and then you're leaning less and less on caffeine. That's a really easy swap to make. If you're someone that knows you're probably drinking too much tea and coffee and you're not drinking enough water, that's a really simple way that you can swap from um, consuming those stimulants to getting your own natural energy. Think about reducing down your gluten in your dairy. Again, if you're someone who struggles with IBS uh, and bloating, by just switching a few things up and reducing down your gluten and dairy, you can find yourself having, again, more energy and better gut health. But that's for some people is a little bit too, it's a step too far. What I would say if you're 
if you know you don't drink enough water, start there with the water and then kind of go, right, I'm starting with the water. That's the first lifestyle change I'm going to make. And then once I've got into the habit with that, I'm going to start making sure there's something green on every plate so that I'm starting to get more of that fiber into my system. And then once I've, start, once I've got the greens under control, then I'm going to maybe look at where I'm consuming too much dairy and begin to reduce that down. It's all about taking steps that work for you and are the pace that's right for you, basically. And that's what I do with all of my clients. I meet them with where they are at this moment and help them to understand the changes they can begin to make without it being too overwhelming. The key with any kind of lifestyle change that we make, if it's overwhelming, Often what we think is, right, Monday morning, I'm on it again. I'm getting sorted. I'm going to be on a health kick. And then by Wednesday, we've given up because it's too many changes that we're trying to make in one go. And it feels too hard. So it's just about kind of going, right, what are the things that I can do that are going to help me support my liver and my intestine? Drinking more water is the first thing that I would say. Starting to consume more green food, reducing down your caffeine and replacing it with maybe hot water maybe only having two nights a week where you're having alcohol. There's just little steps that you can take that will gradually begin to add up to a bigger whole, basically. So don't look at this and go, oh, I can't do any of that. That's too too overwhelming. Just start with one thing. Start with one thing and make that change. And once you're in the habit of that change, then you can bring another thing in. Always, always, always listen to your body. Your body will communicate with you. Like I said, it's a sophisticated machine. It's going to tell you, if there's something wrong and we stopped listening to our body. So tiredness at four o'clock in the afternoon is a sign. Your body's telling you that the food you ate at lunchtime didn't work for you, for example. So really start to kind of think, what is, what, what's going on here? I feel really bloated. What did I eat at lunchtime or what did I eat at breakfast that might've caused this bloating? And really start to hear the messages that your body's telling you. Become more intuitive and then you can begin to make some changes. I've drunk two liters of water today. I actually feel really energized and my, my brain feels really clear. Let's do more of that kind of thing. So you can start to make these changes as gradually as possible at a pace that's right for you. Then step number two is to get your blood sugars balanced. Now, this for me is the panacea. Getting your blood sugars balanced is a total game changer, a total game changer. And it's the thing that, again, that is ignored by the mainstream, by the food industry and all that kind of thing, because they want you to consume sugar in their food. Now, it's not just about sugar. It's about what carbohydrate, basically. So I want you to think about being, there being a spectrum of carbohydrates. On one end of this spectrum, so carbohydrates, let me just explain. Carbohydrates are the, the foods that create glucose in the body. And glucose is the main source of energy for all the little powerhouses in our cells that help us to function on a day-to-day -day basis, the mitochondria, basically. They live in our, they're in our cells and they produce the energy that we need on a day-to-day -day basis to get through the day, okay? Any carbohydrate we consume will release glucose. Now, it depends on the type of carbohydrate you're consuming as to how quickly that glucose is released. So if you think about a spectrum of carbohydrates, on one end, you've got green and red and orange and purple and lots of colorful carbohydrates in the form of fruit and vegetables, the fiber that I was talking about earlier on that feeds the good bacteria. Then you've got beige in the form of kind of pasta and bread. And then you've got white in the form of cakes and biscuits and cookies and anything and, and alcohol I would put in the white category as well. So you've got this spectrum of colors. It's the easiest way to think about it. If you're consuming lots of carbohydrate on the beige and the white end of the spectrum, that will release glucose into your bloodstream really quickly, okay? If you're consuming your carbohydrate on the colorful end, that releases glucose into your bloodstream in a nice, steady way. So if I show you the next slide, when you're consuming all your carbohydrate from that beige and white end of the spectrum, you're gonna have a massive release of the blood sugar hormone insulin. OK, insulin is going to spike really quickly because blood because your blood sugars have risen really quickly. Now, insulin is designed to pick up glucose and take it to the cells for energy production to, to, to give it to the mitochondria, basically. But if we're sedentary and we're not doing anything necessarily or we've got too much sugar and too much glucose that's being released into our bloodstream, um, 
the cells start to shut down. They're, the little receptors on the cells, the insulin receptors on the cells start to shut down. They go, we don't need any more sugar. We don't need any more glucose. Take it away. And so the insulin will take that glucose to the liver and store it as something called glycogen, which puts more pressure on the liver, which overloads the liver even further. It's already struggling. It's already a bit sluggish from all the toxins we're exposed to. But the more this happens, the more sluggish our liver becomes, but the more we get on a massive blood sugar roller coaster throughout the course of the day. So when we eat something that is on the beige and the white end of the spectrum, our blood sugars rise quickly. Insulin picks the sugars up, takes it to the cells for energy production. The cells don't need it. They shut down. Insulin takes the sugar or the glucose to the liver and stores it. OK, you have a blood sugar crash because it's taking all these sugars, all these glucose to the liver to store it, taking it out of the bloodstream. Now, your brain functions on glucose. Your brain needs glucose for energy production or just a function. So as soon as it perceives your blood sugar is going below that green dotted line, it will go, oh, my goodness, quick, eat something. Glucose has dropped. I need more glucose. Get some, eat something. And that's when the cravings kick in. The cravings will kick in for something sweet. So that's why I was saying earlier on, actually, it isn't about the fact that you haven't got any willpower with your craving sugars sugar it's more about the fact that your blood sugars have crashed and your brain has kicked in and said we need some glucose make sure you eat some glucose and eat it quickly and so you'll reach for a sugary snack your blood sugars will rise again insulin will be released again it's going to take the sugars to the cells the cells are going to go no we don't want you take it away the insulin is going to take it to the liver and store it as glycogen again your blood sugars are going to crash you're going to have another you're going to have another sugar craving the 3 p.m. slump, the 10.30 biscuit with your coffee, all of those are signs that your blood sugars are on a blood sugar, your, your um, blood glucose is on a, a roller coaster throughout the day. Insulin is rising, it's troughing, it's rising, it's troughing. Every time you have that slump in blood sugars, you'll lose focus, you'll feel like you've got no energy, you will have an overriding craving for sugar. You'll be pacing around the kitchen trying to find something. And if you're calorie counting to try and manage your weight, you'll be your mind will be going crazy because you'll try to find something that fulfills that sugar craving but doesn't take you over the, the allotted calorie amount. It's soul destroying. It's soul destroying. Now, when you get your blood sugars balanced, when your insulin is balanced, and so you, what you want the balance is to be between the two green lines, when your insulin is really nicely balanced, you haven't got these peaks and troughs, you haven't got the trough where you're craving sugar, you've just got consistent energy and consistent, you actually feel full as well because insulin is a hormone that um, impacts two other hormones. One hormone that tells us we're hungry and one hormone that tells us we're full. If insulin is high in your system, it will impact the hormone that tells you you're hungry and you'll always have an appetite. If it's low in your system or if it's steady in your system between the two green lines, you're going to release a hormone that tells you you're full. And so you will stay full between meals. So you won't need to snack and you'll get rid of the need to snack. And actually not needing to snack is really healthy for the body. You should just be having three good meals a day and not needing to snack in between that. If you can do that, and without feeling hungry, without needing to snack, then that's when you know your blood sugars are really balanced. Now, insulin is a dominant hormone. And when it's high in the system, it's causing a stress internally and it's starting to set up inflammation. Again, I'm not going to go into the detail of that. But when insulin is high in the system, your body starts to get stressed internally, starts to create inflammation. That's when you can see joint pain developing, when you have brain fog. Uh, it also means that it will disrupt your sleep as well. There's a whole load of things that will happen if insulin is constantly high, least of all getting a kind of um, pre-diabetic diagnosis from the, from, the, um, from the doctor, for example. There's lots of things happen when your insulin is all over the place. Yet when insulin is balanced, there's also lots of really good things that happen. When insulin is balanced, you can manage your weight more effectively. Your hormones come back into balance because you're not overloading your liver with glycogen. Like your sleep improves, your energy levels rise. 
you get rid of the cravings, your mental health improves as well, your mood improves. There's so many benefits to having balanced blood sugars. So how do you do that? That's what you want to know, isn't it? So where do you start? Well, I would always start with protein for breakfast. None of this is rocket science. This is stuff that you can find if you, you know, if you kind of go and go looking for it. Um, but we've been told for years that we should have a carbohydrate based breakfast. Or we have been told for years that actually breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's not necessarily the most important meal of the day. That comes from Mr. Kellogg, who was trying to sell his um, his cornflakes. And um, he was telling us to eat protein, to eat to carbohydrate for breakfast. And breakfast is the, the most important meal of the day. So if you eat protein, if the first thing you eat is protein, what protein does is it releases glucose much more slowly. Um, it, it won't have the same spike of insulin into your bloodstream. So when you eat protein for breakfast, you'll have a much slower release of blood sugars. Your blood sugar balance throughout the rest of the day is related to what you have for your breakfast. If you're hungry by half past 10, what you ate at breakfast time didn't work for you. It spiked your blood sugars and it's what caused them to crash. So eating protein at breakfast time is going to help you to get your blood sugars balanced through the course of the day. OK, so that's the first thing I would say. Change your breakfast up to, you know, it could be um, porridge with loads of seeds and nuts on. It could be full fat Greek yogurt with loads of seeds and nuts and fruit. It could be eggs, whatever it is. Make sure it's more of a protein based breakfast rather than toast and cereal. And I know toast and cereal, sometimes it's quick and easy, but actually there are just as many protein based breakfasts that you can create. To create scrambled eggs takes two, two or three minutes. It doesn't take very long at all. So your protein based breakfast is going to really help you to um, have better blood sugar balance through the course of the day. Fill your plate with colours. That goes back to the, having the green food to feed the good bacteria as well. Mother Nature is very clever. She kind of tells us what we need to do and she makes it kind of work three or four times over. Um, if your plate is full of colours, not only is it going to keep your blood sugars balanced, but it's also going to feed the good bacteria with all the fibre and help to support your, your um, intestinal health as well. Try not to snack between meals because the minute you start to snack, your blood, your, blood, your blood glucose levels, your insulin levels will rise and then you're going to start to go on a roller coaster. If you can eat a meal that keeps you, you should be able to eat a meal that keeps you full for about four to five hours. That's when you know your blood sugars are balanced. If you can go from one meal to the next without needing to snack. Um, so if you're snacking, if you have to snack, you know that your blood sugar is not balanced yet. It takes about 10, can take about up to 10 days to get your blood sugars balanced. When you start to implement some of these changes, start with just switching up your breakfast. Maybe if you take nothing else away from this webinar, go, I'm going to eat more of a protein based breakfast and I'm going to make sure I have two liters of water a day. Those two things in themselves will make a big difference to improving your energy and improving how, how you feel about yourself on a day to day basis. Walking after you've eaten, remember I said when you're if you're a sedentary and your blood sugars rise and uh, the the mitochondria in the cells don't want to don't want any more energy um, and they start to shut down or the receptors start to shut down. If you walk after you've eaten, that's that kickstarts the mitochondria into working again and you can use up some of the glucose that's in your bloodstream. It doesn't have to be very far, 10 minutes around the block could actually even just be three or four runs up and down the stairs. That's sometimes enough to just get your um, mitochondria kick-started again and getting your, um, getting your body using that glucose. Try and eat by seven o'clock. Now, this is a big one because a lot of people, and I get it, a lot of people will say, I can't eat by seven o'clock. It's just not going to happen. I've got kids to get to bed or, you know, I've gone to a class or what have you. If you can't eat by seven o'clock, try and eat more at lunchtime and less in the evening. The reason for this is if you eat by seven o'clock or if you're not eating anything into the evening, as your blood glucose levels come down, it will allow other hormones to kick in to mean that you'll get a better night's sleep. When you get a better night's sleep, that will have a cascade effect on the choices you make the next day and how your body is functioning. Funnily enough, I'm going to talk about that next. And again, listen to how food makes you feel. Listen to the messages your body is telling you. So if you have eaten by seven o'clock, you should be getting good sleep. And that is step number three. Step number three 
alongside the blood glucose balance or the blood sugar balance is probably the next biggest step. Actually, they're all really, really important. None of them I could say is one is more important than the other. Healthy liver and intestine is going to give you the foundation. Balanced blood sugars is going to help you stop the snacking and manage your weight and get everything, get you you feeling better about the choices you're making. Sleep is going to have an impact across the board with other things as well. So I'm just going to give you a few statistics that might make you go, oh my goodness, I need to think about my sleep. Okay. When you don't, when you get anything less than six hours sleep a night, the killer cells that will protect you from viruses and infection and stuff like that become 70% less effective. So your immune system basically drops by 70% the day after a poor night's sleep. If you're having anything less than six hours sleep consistently every night, you're going to be exposing yourself to all sorts of colds and all, all kind of other things. It's going to be harder for you to, to stop picking up um, illnesses. When you're getting anything less than six hours sleep a night, your cardiovascular system isn't cleaning itself. And they've done some research to show that if you're getting less consistently less than six hours sleep a night, um, that impact on your cardiovascular system is having is having the same stiffening impact as smoking 20 a day would do if you're having anything less than six hours sleep a night. Less than six hours sleep a night, you are you are increasing your chance of a car of a cardiac arrest by 25%. Ooh, that for me is a frightening figure. Women, more women die of cardiac arrest than die of breast cancer post 40. You want to be really thinking about how much sleep you are having every night. Okay. Because you're exposing yourself. If you're not getting six hours sleep a night, you're you're increasing your chance of heart attack by 25%. They did a study in the um, Southern California, University of Southern California, where they gave two groups of people exactly the same amount of calories on a day to day basis. One group was allowed to sleep for eight hours a night. The other group was allowed to sleep for four hours a night. The group that was allowed to sleep for eight hours a night become became were 55 percent more efficient at burning fat than the group that were allowed to sleep for four hours a night. And those that were sleep deprived lost 70 percent more muscle mass than weight, than, than fat mass, than the, than, the, than the triglyceride stores. You are more like you're going to probably more like you have to if you have less than six hours sleep a night, you're going to consume about 500 more calories the following day because your insulin doesn't reset. So you're already on a blood sugar roller coaster when you wake up or when you get up if your sleep is poor. And one in four people who don't get a decent night's sleep are more likely to struggle with a mental health issue. So how do you get a good night's sleep? It starts in the morning. It absolutely starts in the morning. Get outside for 10 minutes in the morning. If you're asleep, you're struggling with your sleep, the light in your eyes first thing in the morning will reset your circadian rhythms and if you do that consistently every day, it will start to have an impact on the quality of your sleep. Have lemon water first thing in the morning. Have half a lemon squeezed into warm water first thing in the morning. That is going to cleanse your liver. It's going to give your liver a load of love and help to clear out a lot of those toxins, which will mean your liver is not as stressed when you go to bed that night and your it will be able to do a more efficient job. We've already talked about two litres of water a day. Two litres of water a day when you are fully hydrated, you are more likely to get a better night's sleep if you're fully hydrated than if you're in a dehydrated state. Restrict your blue light activity after eight o'clock. Restricting your blue light activity. So when I talk about blue light activity, I mean things like tablets and, and phones. That blue light hits the back of your eyes and tells you it's daytime. And so you start to release a hormone called cortisol that is only released during the day. It should have dropped off by the time you go to bed. If you're having, if you're, um, uh, you know, looking at your phone in the evening, and you've got this blue light hitting the back of your eyes, your cortisol levels are going to rise. When cortisol is high in the system, we don't release two really important hormones, growth hormone that sends us into a deep quality sleep and melatonin that helps us to get into that kind of soporific state. 
our circadian rhythms go all over the place when we're looking at our phones in the evening. Doom scroll scrolling is particularly bad. So you want to be thinking about kind of reducing your blue light activity from, depending on what time you go to bed, really for any time from 8, 8.30 to 9 o'clock in the evening. Again, I've talked about don't not eating after 7 o'clock. You want your insulin levels to come down. Again, when insulin is low, you will release growth hormone and melatonin that helps us to go into a good quality sleep. Have a good bedtime routine. Make sure that by 9.30, you're starting to move towards bed. You've come off your phone. You've had a, a drink of water, so you're nicely hydrated. You've cleaned your teeth. You've kind of gone through a bedtime routine. You've made sure the room is nice and cool. You've got into bed and read, read your book for half an hour. A good bedtime routine so your brain knows what it's dealing with can have a huge impact on the quality of your sleep. And avoid caffeine after midday. Caffeine, the half-life of caffeine is eight hours. So if you're having a cup of coffee at four o'clock in the afternoon, you're still going to have at least half of that in your system when you when at 12 o'clock at night. Caffeine is a stimulant and it will prevent you from going into a deep quality sleep. It will prevent you from going into that deep stage three and four sleep that we need for our brain to clean, for our muscles to clean, for all the cellular waste to be got rid of. If we're not getting stage three and four sleep, if we're just staying in the lighter phases of sleep, some of you will have sleep trackers and they'll show you that you're getting, you know, kind of light sleep, but not deep sleep. It's only in the deep sleep where our brain is cleansing uh, and our, the whole of our cardiovascular system is clearing and getting rid of all the plaque and the stuff that's stiffening the arteries and stuff. Sleep is your is, is, is a free form of health insurance, yet none of us prioritize sleep. It's so, so important. So you've got three really key areas there that, that you need to think about in order to regain your glow, to get your inner glow back again. We need to be thinking about having our liver and intestine working properly, easy to do with lemon water first thing in the morning, cleansing the liver, um, lots of green food, uh, lots of good quality fibers, drinking more water. Our sleep, our, our blood sugars, getting our blood sugars balanced with a good protein based breakfast um, and just making sure that we've got plenty of colors on every plate. Again, feeding the good bacteria in the intestine and then making sure that we're prioritizing our sleep by not looking at our phones in into the evenings, making sure that we're we're hydrated, getting outside for those 10 minutes, lemon water first thing in the morning. Can you see that there's a repeating pattern? Some of these things are applicable to, right across the board with all three of these steps. All three steps, if you can make, if you can start making a change in all three areas, so just pick one from each of the three areas, start to focus on that. If you do that consistently for a month, you will really start to see some changes to your well-being. And then there'll be a few bonus steps as well. <laughs> Not going to go into these in a lot of detail because I'm already aware that I've been talking for hours or feels like I'm talking to hours. I could go on forever. You want to cleanse your liver regularly with a proper, proper cleanse, not a juice cleanse or that kind of thing, a proper nourishing, full of nutrients cleanse, one that is going to give your liver the, the raw materials that it needs to cleanse properly. You want to keep your stress under control as much as possible. Deep breathing, that kind of thing. The right type of movement. So yoga, relaxation movement, but moving on a regular basis. Walking is another great solution to, to helping your body to kind of rebalance internally. And being accountable. We are 90% more likely to make changes and stick with them if we are accountable, if we have an accountability buddy or part of a program basically these are key things that you can do what i want you to take away from this webinar tonight though is i don't want you to punish yourself i don't want you to punish your body and think oh i've got to do this i've got to do that and it's all going to be really hard i want you to think about loving and respecting your body and nourishing it that's the way they're going to make lifestyle changes your body isn't something that is to abuse it's the only place you've got to live You've got to look after it. You've got to give it TLC. You've got to give your liver TLC. You've got to give it all the nutrients it needs. Don't think about restricting. Focus on how much can I give my body that is going to support my well-being. That's the way you're going to get your, that's the first way, the first starting point, basically. When you come to terms with that, that this is all about me 
nourishing and supporting my body not restricting which is what we've been told for years you know calorie counting all the kind of health programs that we've been told about you know this meal replacement or that restriction or that calorie counting it's all about punishing ourselves let's not punish ourselves let's give our body what it needs but in a way that means that we're giving it all that love and 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 nourishment count nutrients if you want to count anything count nutrients don't count calories okay because calories just send us into a spiral of decline and make us feel like we're punishing ourselves so i said i was going to give you a very special code okay accountability is the magic source that's what's going to make a difference now i have a four-week sugar-free method program that is for a small group of five women And the next program, the next cohort starts on Monday, the 4th of March. It's a game changer. It's a total game changer. During this time, you will learn everything you need to know to understand how to balance your blood sugars. It's such a simple uh, program to follow. It's a a really easy program to follow. And you're going to get so much from it. Uh, I was going to... I was hoping that someone who just finished the program was going to be on here, but I can't see her on here, unfortunately. So I spoke to her this afternoon. She said that she would come on and give me a little testimonial, but she must have something must have happened this evening, unfortunately. But what did have a chat with her this afternoon? And she said she won't mind me telling you this. She started the program at the beginning of January. Um, I had her kind of follow up call with her this afternoon and she's lost 12 pounds in that time. And she just feels like a completely different person. So what you get with the four week sugar free method is four weeks of accountability in a WhatsApp group. Um, Five people working all together to create this community. We always get the best results as women when we're part of a community. Um, You get a a daily video or every other day you get a video that teaches you how to eat for good blood sugar balance. But not only is it good blood sugar balance, we will focus on sleep. We will focus on mindset. We will focus on um uh taking actions every day that will help to get your blood sugars balanced you'll learn and understand what you need to do and how to eat uh, for good blood sugar balance and getting your insulin under control and when insulin is under control it's a game changer it's the panacea to managing our weight to managing our hormones to managing our sleep from from when, once we get into our 40s and 50s basically it's And it's actually really easy to do. You just need to understand how to do it. It's not complicated at all. Um, And I teach you all of that within this four week program. It's a very simple program to follow. It's not complicated. It's just about applying these principles every single day and learning new lifestyle techniques that you can implement and take forward with you once you finish the program as well. So I just I'm going to put into the chat box now the little code that I talked about, which is RRW10. Uh, If you put, when you get into the checkout code, um, when you get to the checkout point, if you put RRW, Reclaiming Radiance Webinar, that's what RRW stands for, (laughs) 10, that will give you a 10% discount, but that's only available until Friday, the 6th of March, so this Friday coming. I only take five people at a time on this program and it always sells out every single month. I run it every single month, but it always sells out because it gets great results, basically. So just put that in the chat box and there is a clickable link if you wanted to go through and look at it in a little bit more detail. Um, But that program starts on the 4th of March. March. I have a number of other programs that I run. Um, I do some one-to-one programs and I have um, a sugar circuit break program, which is a seven-day program as well. Um, you can look at my website, thesugarfreecoach.com, if you want to understand a little bit more about how I work. If you've not come across me before, if this is your first experience of kind of hearing what I've got to say. But if any of what you said to, uh, I've said today has res- resonated with you, then, um, then you know, and you want to know more, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you on the phone as well. If you go to my website and click freebies, you can book in a clarity call as well. So if you think, mm, I'm not sure that's right for me, but I'd like to do this program, I'd like to have a conversation with you, you can book in a free 15 minute clarity call and we can have a chat. Um, so just looking at some of your questions, is it okay to have herbal teas instead? Yes, absolutely. But what I would say Um, is that you have to be careful of some of the herbal teas you you consume. Some of them, if you have them, have too many of them, they can have their own effect, impact on the body as well. I'll give you a really good example. 
I love licorice tea. Licorice tea is one of those teas that I think, oh yeah, I love a licorice tea. I was drinking what I didn't think was that many, but I was drinking four cups a day and it was pushing my blood pressure up. Um, licorice is not great for blood pressure if you if you drink it to excess. Um, and it, it wasn't until after I'd had a high blood pressure reading and I was like, oh my God, how can I have a high blood pressure reading? I'm like one of the healthiest people I know. And then and then um, I went and looked at the, health, the licorice tea packet and it said, if you drink in excess, can cause blood pressure issues. So what I would say with herbal teas is you don't really want to do more than two to three cups of herbal tea a day. You're better off doing a hot water with some a slice of lemon in if you're looking for an alternative to coffee, basically. I don't know who Zoom user is, so I'm sorry I'm not using your name, um, but um, I hope that helps. Decaf. Hmm. Decaf, the process they put the beans through to decaffeinate them they use chlorine they force chlorine through the beans to decaffeinate them and that makes decaf more toxic than actually if you're having a cup of caffeinated coffee so you're actually better off just trying to wean yourself down to one good cup of quality coffee a day rather than reaching for decaf as a solution there's never an easy solution is there but i would always say you know go for the quality, go for good quality coffee once a day and see it as a, as a bit of a treat to yourself. Protein foods you would recommend for breakfast eater. Well, I think I said a couple of things. So seeds and nuts are great sources of protein that you can mix, you can stir through, um, you know, kind of porridge, put some blueberries on it and stuff like that. You could do eggs for breakfast. You could do omelette for breakfast. You could do, I would always do full fat Greek yogurts full of protein with lots of seeds and nuts. So I'll give you an example of what I eat for breakfast. I will have a couple of tablespoons of full fat Greek yogurt. I'll put flat seed and chia seed on it. I'll have, a, I've got a, like a jar that I create of loads of seeds and nuts. So it's got pumpkin seeds and sesame seeds and blanched almonds in it and stuff like that. I sprinkle that on it and then I have a big scoop of peanut butter because I'm a bit of a peanut butter for a fiend and I love peanut butter. I'll have that with my breakfast. Um, and then usually blueberries and grapes on top of that. And that breakfast will keep me going for hours. But that's because I know what works for me. I've listened to my body. So this morning I went out and met a friend for breakfast and I had um, eggs and avocado and I didn't stay anywhere near as full on eggs and avocado as I would do having that yogurt based breakfast. So I know that that's how my body works. What you've got to do is listen to your body's eater, try a different protein based breakfast and see which ones work for you. See whether a savory protein based breakfast or a sweet spray, but whichever breakfast works for you. And sometimes it's about tweaking little things as well. Um, I had a client who was having porridge for breakfast and it was keeping her full for hours with seeds and nuts on it. And then she would, um, and then one day she decided to put some blueberries on it. And um, she, she put these blueberries on it. And by 10.30, she was starving. And she said, I just couldn't get, get over the difference how much, what a difference just adding the blueberries to it was. Actually, I'm going to stop my screen because my stop share, because I'm talking to myself here. I'm not talking to you on the screen. So um, let me just answer the rest of the questions. Um... Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? So I've done protein foods, sparkling mineral water. The trouble with sparkling mineral water is it can leach calcium out of your bones. So because because it's um, because and I can't remember the right way around, but basically when you are having if your sparkling mineral water is naturally carbonated, that's OK. But if it's carbonated at source, you have to be very careful carbonated is source it means they've put the carbonate carbon into it to make it sparkle and that one will cause a leaching of uh, calcium from your bones so i wouldn't i would see sparkling more mineral water as something that you had maybe if you were going out socially and you wanted a fizzy drink i wouldn't be drinking it on a day-to-day -day basis it can cause more problems than it's worth okay how about hot water and pieces of ginger? Yeah, that's fine. I'm I'm okay with that. Pieces of ginger, as long as it's fresh ginger, not kind of crystallized ginger. But um, yeah, hot water with fresh ginger is is absolutely fine. That's a really good anti-inflammatory, actually, and so it can really help to reduce inflammation. Uh, so the so yeah, so um, you actually it is it does say one fifty nine, and I'm going to honour that. I should have changed it actually. So. If you bear with me a second and I will I will give you one more code um, because you're on this webinar tonight. I should have changed it so that it said it's normally one nine nine and it was with 10 percent off. 
um, which took £19 off it. But actually, I'm going to give you 20% off, which is, that's the kind of person I am. I like doing things like that. Um, so I'm going to give you another code. And I just need to think what that code is. F is OK, so it's SCB sugar circuit break this is the code that i normally give to my sugar circuit break team when they when they do that um seven days scb 20 so you get it for 20 percent off because you're on the webinar tonight because i love you all and i'm grateful to you for coming on live i uh, appreciate it so if you put that scb 20 in that'll give you 20 percent off um and um uh but it's only available until friday just so you know okay um, but if you've got any questions or you can't make it work, just drop me an email. I, I put my email in the chat box as well. It's sue at suethomas.org. Uh, if you can't make it work, just drop me an email and I'll check it and make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. Because I should have changed that link. And I and because I haven't changed the link, I'm going to honour it for you. So anybody else got any other questions? Anything else that anyone would like me to go through this evening? So all I need to say, is, so thank you so much for joining me live. I really do appreciate it. For those of you that are listening to it on catch up, because I know a lot of people said they would like to listen to it on catch up. Uh, I will honor that £159 for you guys as well, but it's only available until Friday. OK, so thank you so much for joining me live. Hopefully I will see some of you on the sugar free method. Um, it is a great program. And it really does get nice results. In fact, I think you're going to get an email tomorrow with a little video from Helen who did the program um, back in, uh, in she did it in November last year. Um, but she's had a great result as well. Everybody that goes through the program, if they follow it properly, gets great, great results. So thank you for joining me. Really appreciate it. Uh, have a great rest of the evening, won't you? And hopefully I will speak to you all soon. Take good care. Thanks again. Bye bye.